when you do what you're doing to a culture, and by the way, actually, I'd love for, to hear from your pastor about if there have been societies where people wore masks for any reason, I'd like to understand how that affected the behavior of that society. That would be really, if there's any like historians or anthropologists who know about communities that wore masks for some period of time and how that affected the dynamic, that would be fascinating to study for me personally. Um, but whenever you By the take way, let me go ahead. Let me interrupt real quick. Yeah. He said something interesting in the sermon. He, he referred to them as veils because he said, Mm. The purpose of a mask is to change your identity. And the purpose of a veil is to hide and obscure your identity. Right. And he said, these masks make me think more of veils, oh, which fair. I thought was interesting. Fair. fair. But yeah. Well, um, regardless, whenever you, whenever you take a society and, and you like th think of, uh, I guess the analogy would be like a balloon, right? You squeeze one part of it, the other part, the air has got to go somewhere, right? So that, that pressure pops, you know, pops up somewhere else. Whenever you do something like this to a society, you have you like make some sudden change or do something. Um, you generally, generally, there's this, uh, there's this social, I will say, psychological pressure that needs to go somewhere. Like something's changed, it it distorts the psychology, and like it needs there needs to be something else needs to change as a result. There's like a side effect. And the example that I'll give is in post-World War II Japan. So uh, in in World War II, after we, I guess since it's uh, Pearl Harbor Day, this is a good, I think it's Pearl Harbor Day today, right? This is a good day to talk about this. After we defeated Japan, um, the, the allies went in and implemented relatively strict rules compared to Japanese society. Maybe they weren't strict for us, but for for Japan, relatively strict rules about pornography and and sex, and um, which is why you know Japanese everything's pixelated if you ever see any Japanese nudity, um, and that came from that came from the West. That came that wasn't something that was organically part of Japanese culture, and there was already some kind of weirdness in Japanese culture from my perspective, being a Westerner. There was already historically a little bit of oddities in, in Japan's relationship with sex, we'll say. But after World War II, the U.S. came in and squeezed that balloon. They clamped down on one area of Japanese sexuality rather hard. Um, no pun intended. And what happened is you saw this other area of Japanese sexual expression kind of in this weird distorted way come out. And now you've got, I don't know if you know this about Japan, but like grown men on the subway read like sex comic books, like it's normal, right? You have a lot of weird fetishes in Japan. Ten is this where tentacle porn came from? That, yeah, you got all this actually, sadly, I believe tentacle porn predated World War II, which is wow. one of the things that's weird. But um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, you've got what, I think what happened was, you had to clamp down in this area and there was already this pressure. It, there was like, it had to go somewhere. And so it like shot out in other unhealthy or weird ways, except we'll call them eccentric ways. Um, and so that we're not super judgmental, but like it's shot out in these eccentric ways in society. And it's kind of caused this weird, what we would say is kind of this odd expression, which is why a lot of, uh, a lot of Japan has these weird sexual overtones with a lot of things that they do, and it's kind of just icky, right? There's like the the lowly girl thing and like the hostess bars and like all this weird, like there's weird stuff that happened as a result of this. Um, although hostess bars are probably a leftover from the geisha period, but it doesn't matter. Um, and so I your point about masks. My point about is, masks, yeah, yeah, getting back to masks is I don't know what's going to happen to our society, but we have this essentially this humans are it's kind of like we're suddenly in junior high school and everyone has the cooties where like you're not allowed to get close to people you're not allowed to touch people you're not allowed to like converse without a mask and see their faces everything's like this right i'm curious about how that's going to express itself in culture because all of that missed connection and all of that frankly that inherent risk that comes with personal interaction it's going to need to go somewhere. 
it's someone yeah. somehow it's going to express somewhere and i'm curious about how it's going to express in our culture and it's probably not going to be something it, that we look at and say it's healthy be, gonna be gross yes <laughs> probably gonna be gross yeah, that's that's I, my concern okay <laughs> i think we're gonna look at it and go oh why is that thing popular now and the reason that whatever gross thing is going to be popular the reason that that will be popular is because of this that's why remember it's popular. that remember that weird gross trend of people filming themselves licking ice cream in stores mm -hmm. and putting it back in the fr freezer i'm shocked that didn't happen after I'm shocked that happened when it did and not now, because that almost seems like the kind of thing that would you would start to see people trying to be taboo in this really gross way, you know, of like, like, you know, right. I don't know. Something right. like so that. So you can imagine the taboo things that will happen and they don't necessarily need to be sexual. I just used the Japan example because I, I thought it was right. It's something that I spent a lot of time in Japan. And it's something that struck me as odd about the culture. And so I was wondering what was going on. So I knew a little bit about it. But. I, you know, in our society, I don't know, it might turn into gross, more gross ice cream looking things or weird, like viral exchange parties. Like you have no idea what the, it, it could get weird and gross and it's going to get when something weird and gross happens and you wonder why look back at 2020. That's your answer. That's why. I would just like to announce that anyone who's planning on coming, my parties will neither be they will not be gross. They might be weird. <laughs> <laughs> no gross. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Someone says I'm giving young people ideas. I hope not. I'm not. No. Uh. <laughs>